Hey, what's up everybody? This is Len with 715 Outdoors. Please excuse my speech. I have Bell's palsy. Hopefully it passes. Um, I'm not going to get into that. There is a link to my video about it below in the description if you're interested. But today we are here at the cabin doing chores and the chore we are doing today is we are putting in apple trees. And the kind of apple trees I got, they are bare root. Uh, we're going to do a bare root planting. While the trees are still in dormancy, it's a great option because apple trees can be expensive. But when you get them with bare root, I got these for about $35, $40 a piece from a local nursery. So what I have is um, red regent apples and I have honey crisp. The reason I chose those is because a honey crisp apple in my zone is going to produce fruit from early to mid-September and the Red Regent is gonna produce apples from mid to late October. So what I'm trying to do is to get as much fruit for the season as I can. So these are bare uh, stock. We're gonna plant those and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so some of the tools you're gonna to need for this. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, I hope that today is the day I earn your subscription. But some of the tools you're gonna to need to plant your trees are you're gonna need stakes. These are about 18 into 24 inches. I had to cut a little notch in them with my electric chainsaw. I've got three to four for each tree. I have some clear plastic tube. It doesn't have to be this kind, but you're going to need this for your rope because uh, you're gonna stake these trees down time and you want this going around the tree so you don't do damage to the bark, okay? The other thing that I have is a root stimulator. I'm gonna uh, I'm going to mix this with the water that we use when the trees are planted to apply and water and hopefully give the roots a really good start. So um, you're also going to need a nice sharp knife to cut your um, to cut your rope. And you're also going to need a hammer or a rubber mallet with which to drive your stakes. By the way, what is also very important is a good tree wrap. These are about... A dollar and a half for the two inch size. You can get them three inch for about three bucks. Um, so this is gonna keep the bunnies and the deer from eating the bark and killing the tree before it ever has a chance to see its life come to full maturity and produce apples the whole world is gonna love, especially the big bucks. So really this is like one of my favorite times to be at the cabin and be on the land because while I want to be somewhat careful, I'm not terribly concerned about spooking deer off the land. You know, if we spook deer, they'll be back by fall. We got months. So we can come out, we can be a little silly, have some fun, and, you know, have campfires and cook s'mores. But come Labor Day, all of that is out the window because it's hunting season. The tool I failed to mention is teenagers. If you have a couple of teenage tools, who can dig your holes for you. Well, that just makes your life an awful lot easier. So where we're placing the trees is we are in the southeast corner of our field in the back on the, I guess we're on the east side. I'm sorry, we're on the west side of the property on the southeast corner of our three acre field. The reason we're putting them here is for sun exposure. Now, we are putting them pretty much right along the edge of the woods. Mainly because, well, when I talked to Randy and we, we talked about this when he did our initial consultation, he said, you know, a mature buck isn't gonna come out to the 50 yard line of the football field in broad daylight, right? So we wanna, we wanna have the attraction, but we want it to be a daytime attraction. So we found a spot, we have a mock scrape right over here. We have trails coming out to the field. And so we are strategically placing these four trees along the edge of the wood line here. And we're going to make them close enough so that the deer can come out and feel safe having a snack. Meanwhile, we'll find a spot inside the woods to stage based on the direction of the wind and things like that, where we can then pick them off on the way in to the apples or the way back from the apples. All right, so while the boys are digging a hole, I'm going to show you, this is a bare root tree. As you can see, there isn't a whole lot to this. The, the roots are literally bare. 
So what you can see here above the root ball is where the tree has been like grafted. You want to go about two to three inches beneath that graft there. That's, so that's about how deep you want to dig your hole. And the hole doesn't have to be huge, right? You just have to dig it big enough so that your roots can sit in there nice, comfortable, with plenty of space. And here's a really good way to know when your hole is deep enough. Set your shovel across the hole and you can tell by where the root ball is that that's about as deep as we want to go right there. So we have our tree. I'm going to have my young assistant hold the tree in position for me. What we have here in this bucket is water. We have water. And all I'm going to do to start to kind of feather the dirt in. Evan, can you take the lid off of the bucket? Yeah. So a couple of points here. One is you don't want, what you want in the, in the hole to start with is a nice, like soupy mix. I, I can't say cheese very well. Soupy. You want it soupy. So the reason is you want all the air out of the hole so that the roots are completely engulfed with dirt. So I'm going to take some of that and then Evan just dump a little water right down into the hole slowly. Slowly. Just tip it. Just tip the bucket. Tip. Good, stop, right there. So we got our first tree in and staked down, ready to go. Um, I'm probably gonna have to get some fencing to put around these to keep the, the deer from nibbling on them. So as you can see around the, the stump here, we left it a little bit recessed so that uh, water will get in there, soak and stay. Some people only stake their trees from three sides and that's fine if you can do it. I just prefer four. And uh, we're gonna leave these stakes on uh, for at least um, through summer. And we'll have to adjust those as the, as the tree grows. But we wanna protect it from the wind and elements and things like that. All right, and that is it. The trees are in, they're staked, they're strong, and uh, they are ready to be eaten. I think the only thing I'm really gonna do is probably put uh, fences around them because I got a feeling the deer can nip those little things down to twigs in no time. So um, I need about 25 feet of, uh, I'm just probably gonna get like snow fence or something just to keep the deer off of them and uh, let them establish and mature because deer are going to browse them, uh, but they gotta be strong enough to tolerate that browse. So that's it guys, that's it. Um, our next step is to move some tree stands around and um, soil samples. That's the last thing we gotta do is get our soil samples. I'll let you know the results of those. I should get those back by next weekend, hopefully. So. Again, I really appreciate everybody who watches this channel. If I haven't earned your subscription, I hope today is that day that you subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.